Good morning and welcome to worship. This is the day the Lord has made. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter. I think I said that last week, but this week really is the fourth Sunday of Easter. And it is the day that we celebrate Jesus as our good shepherd. I have just a couple of announcements as we begin. Uh, first, this sadly is Julie Lindorf's last official Sunday with us. And we will miss her deeply, um, both her skill and her faith life with us. Um, at the end of the service today, the slideshow will be honoring Julie and her work among us. Uh, if you wanna put in some well wishes at that point, please do um, there as we, as we remember Julie's time with us. Did you know that Emanuel Art Show is going on right now? Yes, I know we can't be in the building, but the art show is online. So if you would like to see some great art created by the Emanuel community, uh, just head to our website. There's a link there that will take you. I think there's one in news and notes as well uh, that will take you to see some great art. And now I invite you to Take a deep breath, be still and know that God is present with you and that you are held by a loving God. We begin our worship now with the thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Here in this place the new light is streaming Now is the darkness vanished away See in this space our fears Oh, yeah. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord God, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from 1 John chapter 3. We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother and sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God. And we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please respond with the bold text. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I, fear no e I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I am the Good Shepherd. Can you hear how precious those words are? In 21st century St. Paul, the closest we get to a shepherd is a kid in a costume during the Christmas pageant. 
And the closest we get to a sheep is wearing a merino wool sweater. I am the good shepherd. Can we understand how precious those words are? And can we hear how much they ask of us? These words, I am the good shepherd, are part of a much bigger story, a much longer story that begins a chapter earlier in the ninth chapter of John. Jesus and the disciples have come to Jerusalem for the feast of the dedication of the temple, which we know as Hanukkah. That means it's December. It is cold. All the crowds are there in their puffy jackets and their mittens, as, and, and you can see their breath as they huddle together to celebrate all of the lights, to celebrate hope and freedom. The city is crowded and the crowds are excited. Through the crowds, Jesus sees a young blind beggar huddled by the side of the road. The disciples glance over and what they see is the basis for a theological argument. Who sinned, him or his parents, that he was born blind? Indifferent, analytical, colder than the weather. This beggar is not a person to them. He is a category, the blind, the beggars, the sinners. But Jesus sees the man. Jesus walks over and touches his face. He gently rubs mud on his eyes. And then Jesus tells him, go, wash in the pool of Siloam. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. What would it be like for this young man to have somebody really see him, to see more than his disability, more than what he lacks, to actually see his personality, his opinions, his hopes and his dreams? I know my own and my own know me is a gift. And it's a gift for us as well. Jesus knows each of us in all that we are, our weaknesses and our strengths, our sorrows and our dreams. Jesus invites us to be in relationship with him and with God, a relationship that is honest and authentic. I know my own and my own know me. In the story, Jesus sends the young man to the pool of Siloam. So he sets out. Imagine him in this crowded city, mud dripping down his face, trying to make his way to this pool. Did anyone help him? Did they pity him? Did they even see him? He finds the water and he washes his face almost like a baptism, and he begins to see. Imagine what that is like, seeing colors for the first time, seeing objects with no reference. What is that? Is it a bird or a building? Imagine having to figure out perspective, three dimensions. Imagine seeing a smile and dozens of other expressions. This man can see, but there's even more. Now he has possibilities before him. Who is he now? What will he be? And then there's the one who healed him, the one who can give sight. Who is he? And what does it all mean? It is so overwhelming to have your world turned upside down to have everything change in a moment. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. 
there are moments in every life when our world turns upside down, when we need a shepherd, when we need someone to take you by the hand and say, it's gonna work out, to be wise and steady when we cannot be either wise or steady, to encourage that next step when that next step is hard. Jesus has promised that nothing in this life or death itself will keep us from his loving presence. The good shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. The young man returns to the temple in wonder and confusion and no one celebrates. Look it up, it's in the ninth chapter of John. No one says, wow, you can see, that's great. No one says, you know what, that big thing over there, that's a tree. No one said, hey, let's celebrate, dinner's on me. No one was willing to celebrate the grace of God and the wonder of miracles. And whether it was fear or skepticism or some weird kind of jealousy, they all said, it's a lie. He's an imposter. This is an unauthorized healing. And that means he's a sinner. Sinner, they called him, sinner. They judged him unworthy of the love of God and the support of the community everyone judging, everyone pushing him away, everyone angry. In the end, after the young man has been doubted, insulted, accused, and blamed, he is cast out, driven from the temple. He is declared unworthy, not good enough, banned from his community. He is literally thrown out into the cold. There outside the temple, Jesus finds him. And Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I give my life for the sheep. This young man has lost everything. He has been told he is strange and wrong and bad and unholy and unwanted. But Jesus tells him he is precious. What would it be like to be found in such a way when you've been told that you're not good enough or that you'll never measure up, that you can't belong? Or maybe when you've said that to yourself, when you feel broken and alone, how wondrous it is to hear Jesus say, I am the good shepherd. I give my life for the sheep. I give my life for you. There outside the temple, Jesus invites this young man into the community of the Good Shepherd, into a new kind of community, a community that pledges to see each person, really see each person, not as a commodity, not as someone to fear or judge, but as a unique, beloved child of God wondrously made with quirks and qualities and a story. Jesus invites him into a new kind of community that will support and protect and care for each other, holding each other's joys and sorrows and questions. Jesus invites him to a new kind of community that is radically welcoming, intentionally forgiving, and focused on creating and redeeming relationships with those unlike themselves. Jesus invites him, invites us all, to a community that follows the good shepherd who died for the sheep, who rose again, and who fills us with the spirit so we can continue to build this community, this community of the good shepherd. Jesus said, 
I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. I call my own sheep and, they, and lead them out. I lay down my life for the sheep. Can we understand how precious those words are? And can we hear how much they ask of us? How much we can give for the sake of others? Amen. On this, the fourth Sunday of Easter, let us pray for the church, the earth, and all in any need. Respond to the words, hear us, O God, with the phrase, your mercy is great. O God, gracious keeper of many flocks, we pray for the church, including our partner congregations, the Mikambizi and Magubike Lutheran Churches of Tanzania, brothers and sisters in Christ in Guatemala, and the Living Gospel Believers Church in St. Paul, and to members of other world religions, that there be an end to interreligious strife, that Sikhs be comforted in their sorrow, and that during Ramadan, Muslims be strengthened for lives of prayer and service. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. O God, mighty preserver of the universe, we pray for the earth, that green pastures and clear waters be provided for herds and flocks, those raised for human use and those living wild, and that farm fields be saved from storm or drought. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. O oh God, the true cornerstone of society, we pray for the nations of the earth, that governments cease aggression against their neighbors, that peace come to Afghanistan, 
Syria, Myanmar, and that Russia, China, and the United States coexist in concord with each other. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. O God, almighty judge of righteousness, we pray for justice in our land, that our criminal justice system continue to be reformed, that ethnic and economic prejudices cease their holds on our people, and that there be peace in our streets. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. O God, healer of our every ill, we pray for all who are sick or suffering, for those stricken with the coronavirus, especially in India and Brazil, for the children who have known continual sorrow, and for those we name here before you. Ashley, Wanda, Jim, Beth, Hafizan, Florence, Truis, Phil, Roger, Susan, Paul, Karen, Sandy, Rachel, David, Brielle, Sarah, Natalie, Craig, Nathan, Andrea, Mike, Ricky, Jeff and his family, June and her family, and those we now name in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating the earth and claiming us as your own. With the saints of all time, we worship you, holy God. We worship you, holy God. 
We praise you for your eternal word, for conquering death, and for raising us up to new life. For your word alive among us, we praise you, living God. We praise you, living God. Breathe the spirit of the risen Christ on us, that we may honor your earth and serve all in need. For your word filling our Easter life, we bless you, loving God. We bless you, loving God. All worship, praise, and blessing be to you, source, power, and sustainer of life, today and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. <laughs>